We can introduce subtraction with everyday objects, as we did for addition. 6 potatoes minus 3 potatoes are 3 potatoes. 5 forks minus 4 forks is 1 fork. Then we can do subtractions with the strings and the cuisinier rods. Although we cannot really take away a part here, we would have to cut apart our rods, and I would not recommend doing that. But we can go backwards in the opposite direction. We count until 7, then we go 3 steps back. There are 4 beads remaining. The same with the rods. Here are 7, but we imagine that we take away these 3. So which rod is the size of what remains? We find that it is the 4. So we see that subtracting 7 minus 3 is the same as asking how much do we have to add to 3 in order to get 7? We can present our subtractions in both ways. So we prepare the children for understanding the principle of the inverse operation, and later the principle of the whole and its parts. Let's represent subtractions also on the number line. This works in the same way as addition, only that we travel from right to left. We can also give the start and the end of the journey and let the child complete what is missing. We want to travel from the 6 to the 10. We find that a rod of 4 covers this journey. We travel to the right, so this is an addition. If we want to travel from the 8 to the 1, we have to go to left, so this is a subtraction. Now we will illustrate what the inverse operation means. When I add these four potatoes, this is an addition. The same action in reverse is a subtraction. Now I have again what I had at the beginning, two potatoes. This means that subtraction is not a completely new operation. I do not need to memorize additions apart and subtractions apart. If I know already that 2 plus 4 is 6, then I know at the same time that 6 minus 4 is 2. On the number line, this is like a journey there and back. From the 2, I advance 4 steps to the 6. From the 6, I go back 4 steps, and then I am again at the 2. We can also use rods with arrows, then the direction of the journey is defined. We can do the same thing with the machines. Here we have again our plus 2 machine. We had the following problem. The output was 7. Which number entered the machine? Now we can solve this in a new way. We let the machine run in reverse. Now it is no longer an addition machine. It is now a subtraction machine. A 7 enters, and a 5 comes out. Let's run the machine forward again, and we see that this result is correct. 5 plus 2 is 7. So, the inverse operation helps us also to check the results of our operations. If I say that 10 minus 7 is 3, then 3 plus 7 should give 10. Correct. If I say that 10 minus 8 is 1, then 1 plus 8 should give 10. No, this is wrong. So my subtraction was also wrong. We can also present a mystery machine. A 9 enters and a 5 comes out. What does this machine do? Let the child discover it. If a 7 enters this machine, what will come out? If a 4 came out of the machine, which number entered? 